So you have the cat of the night and the cat of the day. This one is the cat of the day. Would you like... <laughs> You've got cat of the day is on your lap. <laughs> The cat of the night presumably is out wandering the streets no, he's, or something. He's out, he's out in the hallway <laughs> laying on his back. Out, Marlo just lays with his belly out the whole time. So, <laughs> so do you, would you like to um, expand on the idea of the cat of the night and the cat of the day, who they are and, and why they are the night and the day? So I'll tell you what they are in the book first and then I'll kind of tell you where they came from, I think. <laughs> so the cat of the night is uh, the, the, the kind of the stereotypical <laughs> witch's cat. Um, so it's it's the cat that if you if you find a book about cats and magic, it's the cat that you will find defined in that book. Uh, the cat who can who is kind of no has kind of a sense of knowing, um, can kind of see go. We know that cat well people propose that cats can see ghosts, that they can see into the future, that they can predict things, that they just have this uncanny knack of knowing what's going on. That they, they, they kind of. The walker in the other world, if you like, is the cat of the night. Um, and so there's uh, uh, there's a chapter called the Universal Cat, and that's the cat of myth and legend. Um, so, for example, I start with um, the cat constellation. There used to be a constellation in the sky called the cat. Uh, and I go through some old myths and legends. My favourite one being the Chinese one, that the gods left the cats in charge of the world. And the cats just really be bothered. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nobody, nobody's told no, them that they're not. <laughs> well, according to this Chinese myth, they, the cats couldn't be bothered. The gods came back three times, and the world was in this terrible place. And the cats were like just laying around, like playing with wool. So on the third visit, the gods said, "Well, we're not going to leave you in charge anymore." And the cats kind of went, "Oh, those monkeys over there, those kind of bald monkeys, those are quite nice things. Why don't you give it to them?" Um, uh, but to, but to make sure that we do it properly, the cats stick very close to. So they're keeping an eye on us, making sure that we're doing well. But, you know, uh, let's just say again, the cats have probably failed again because they've not done a great job of it. <laughs> <laughs> let's blame the cats. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and then there's a big chapter there. So there's the universal cat, there's the witch's cat. And so I go through the history of the witch's cat and the witch trials and where that association comes from. And then the third chapter is called Knowing Cat. So it's, it's the cat that, that can predict things. Um, so that's the cat of the night. It's the kind of the, the, the typical, almost stereotypical um, cat in magic. The cat of the day is um, is a very, very different cat and is the cat that I own in a way. And both of them are kind of a bit like this because neither of my cats are at all bothered about the other world. They're not, I mean, <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not sensitive. You can throw a, a shoe at their head and they just don't get it. I mean, I don't. Just to put that out there, obviously. <laughs> yeah, dis let's put a disclaimer. They never mistreat a cat or an animal. As a, as a druid, as an animist, as a vegan, I adore all living creatures, so I would never hurt one. Um, but, you know, my cats, my cats aren't like that. My cats are very straight down the line and they're much more worried about when dinner's going to turn up than whether they're predicting something, you know? Um, I can yeah. relate to that. <laughs> so it was, it was, this was my opportunity to write about this cat that I had, that I saw in the world. Um, so the cat of the day is the cat of the apparent world. And that cat does appear in Myth and Legend because we see them, the, the cat in Dick Whittington, for example, helps Dick get money. So they're, they're very much about this world. Puss in Boots is a cat who knows the way that the world works and is able to help his owner again make lots of money. So we do see this cat. It's just, I don't think anyone's quite joined it up like I did. So um, we've got the uh, the first chapter of the cat of the day is called the idiomatic cat. So that's the cat in, in language and in stories. Then there's um, the physical cat because let alone the other world, if you look at the cat as a piece of biology it is it just it's amazing it's absolutely amazing you know uh, again i wouldn't advocate this but if you throw a cat out of a high window a came <laughs> um, you know we're gonna know, get yeah, complaints I know. About they're completely different. but they write themselves cats have a writing yes a way of writing themselves yeah you know their hearing is phenomenal their sight is phenomenal what their whiskers do and how they get the information through their whiskers. 
you know, just that cat as a as a physical creature in this world. Don't worry about the other world. Just look at what it's doing in this world and how it can sense its way around it. It's absolutely astonishing, the cat as a physical being. Um, and then the final chapter of the Cat of the Day is about how the cat has learned to work with us, and it's called the evolving cat, because cats are also masters of change and real world change, changing for us. So, for example, cats have two kinds of purr. Um, they have a purr, which is just, I'm very happy and, you know, I'm, 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 I'm loving this and I'm, I'm licking my feet and I'm having a great time. Um, and then they have a, a, another kind of purr, which is called a solicitation purr. And that's, I want something. <laughs> so that's when they come to work. I, I'm familiar with that one myself. Well, the, 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 the solicitation purr of a cat is at the pitch of a crying baby because they've learned okay. that doing it at that pitch gets the human to do something. <laughs> That's that, clever. I mean, cats <laughs> don't communicate verbally to each other in, in the wild, in nature. The verbal communication is with us. They learn to do that. They've learned to adapt to share spaces Um uh, there, there's I've been a lot of work done on this. So, like normally, two cats in a space would fight and get very territorial. But you know, on on housing estates, cats can learn to share because that's their new reality, and they adapt to it. So, so this cat of the day is is just the cat that's in the room. It's not a cat that's off anywhere else. It, it's the cat that's in the room, and there is you know a sun energy which shines through the cat of the day which links back to Egypt and Ra and the Sphinx, uh, in the same way that the cat of the night has the moon energy, the cat of the day has that sun energy, which kind of warms us and makes us all fall in the I love that. I did love the connection where you, we do, cats are quite often associated with the moon, aren't they? And I love that you'd put the sun in there as well. So, so this whole brilliant. thing, the, the kind of the idea generating behind all of this, about 10, 12 years ago, uh, my housemate Becky said to me, she said, we're not doing enough to mythologize the cats. And I was like, okay, how do we do that then? Um, but being creative people that, that we are, we like to challenge and we thought we'd give it a go. And um, I had a conversation with Alfie and I said to him, you know, how do I mythologize you? What do I do? Um, and then that conversation, he didn't answer very, he wasn't really interested. And then, <laughs> so I then said, well, do cats have myths? Do cats have stories? And so what I ended up writing was this extended poem um, for children, uh, called the cat of the night and the cat of the day. And it's a cat creation. Myth. So how the world came into being and the moon gives, uh, the earth, the cat of the night as a present. And then the sun gives the cat of the day to the earth as a present and the cats see each other and they chase each other around the world. Um, and that, that was kind of the idea that I then took on and developed into the, the various characters. It works. It, it works brilliantly. Thank you. It's it, one of those weird things that you do as a writer where you write a poem and you go, oh, okay, I'll just put that over there. And then 10 years later, boom, ah, this is where I use it.